Give it up for Jake Kellner, everybody! Hello, can you all hear me? Awesome. So, when I started working for my company about five years ago, um, my boss Jason really took me under his wing. He taught me everything he knows. He helped me build a reputation as a PowerPoint wizard which is really only a flex when you're a consultant like me. Um, but he's really been like an incredible mentor for me. And about two years ago, Jason's mom passed away. Um, and then three months after that, my mom also passed away. And let me tell you, that was not what I had in mind when I told Jason I wanted to be just like him. Um, <laughs> yeah, get used to those jokes, okay? Um, <laughs> after my mom passed, my sister asked me, if I would rewatch every single Marvel movie with her because, well, I love them and we had nothing else to do. And as we're going through, I started to notice this pattern, okay? We've got Captain America, orphan. Iron Man, orphan. Black Widow, orphan. Spider-Man, orphan. Taken in by his aunt and uncle who are then murdered. So he's a double orphan, okay? I'm not gonna include Thor on this list though because even though Chris Hemsworth was like 35 when that happened, um, Thor was 1,500 when his mom died. And let me tell you, after 1,500 Passovers of your mom suggesting you get a haircut and telling you that you absolutely must cut your fingernails because women don't find that attractive, <laughs> believe me, you're gonna be okay when it happens, okay? Um, one, one night after watching a Marvel movie, though, I come upstairs from my basement, and what do I find except my grandparents watching the recording of my mother's funeral that had happened four days prior. Um, they are here tonight. They took a break from watching the funeral. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, <laughs> but I thought it was so fucked up that they were watching her, movie, her, her funeral. But you know, then I went and watched like 30 movies about people with dead parents. So who am I to talk, right? Um, <laughs> I, I am starting to get frustrated, though, because if Marvel taught me anything, it's that when you lose a parent young, um, you also become a superhero. So I listen to this podcast called Grief is My Superpower, but here's the thing. I don't want to learn how to work on myself and grow. I would much rather get bit by a radioactive spider and date Zendaya. Um, alternatively, would love to get injected with super serum and become a six-foot Nazi-punching god, which we actually really, really need in 2023. Um, <laughs> what nobody needs for me is to end the cycle of passing down generational trauma, right? No one did that for me. Both of my grandfathers lost a parent before turning 25 like I did. Um, and, you know, instead of winning a, t get winning a Tony for my breakout performance in Dear Evan Hansen, because I'm like a trauma nepo baby, right? Um, all I got was attachment issues, my mom's Cartier watch, and a 13-year-old Labradoodle with severe separation anxiety. <laughs> and his separation anxiety is so bad that I haven't taken a shit with the door closed in two years, okay? <laughs> and that shit gets to you. Um, <laughs> What's interesting about losing a parent young, though, is that people always seem to ask me if my parents were still together when it happened. Um, and I think it's because they want to know if they need to ask how my dad's doing or if he got to stop making alimony payments. Um, <laughs> the, they, they were together very happily for 35 years. Um, yeah, give it up for them, right? It's one couple we can, they will never get divorced. Um, <laughs> they, they were practically inseparable, though and so inseparable to the point that when people ultimately I say, hey, Jake, you know, how's your dad doing? I always say, you know, a little piece of him died that day. Um, he doesn't like when I say that, but here's the thing. When your dad donates a kidney to your mom and then she dies, um, it's kind of the funniest fucking thing that you can say. <laughs> um, as, as a consultant, um, <laughs> Going back to that, don't worry, dead mom stuff happens too. Um, as a consultant, um, I've started to like dabble using chat GPT a little bit, which is stupid because it's going to be the thing that takes my job um, because, you know, having consultants without having to deal with the consultants is like all of my clients' wet dreams. Like, it's, you know, um, 
But the thing about ChatGPT that's really interesting is that it's only updated to information to a certain point in 2021. And I'm really jealous of that because that means that ChatGPT might live in a world where my mom is still alive. Um, very jealous. Um, but a couple weeks ago, I was like, maybe ChatGPT can like help me with my set, right? So I go on ChatGPT and I type in, write me a joke about my dead mom. <laughs> and ChatGPT goes, I'm an AI, that is extremely disrespectful, and I think we should respect all people, especially the dead. And I was like, nork. Um, <laughs> but also, I was like, hey, at least when you take my job as a consultant, I've got a fallback career as a stand-up comedian. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, you've been a great audience.